What's going on guys, Ryan with Jelly Patrol, back with another video today. Today, I have another Hot Toys Mandalorian figure. And I'm super excited. This is Moff Gideon. It's going to be freaking epic. I can't wait to show you guys this figure. It looks flipping awesome. And if you want to know, well, before, before I get into that, before I get into that, we have a giveaway going on this month. So if you haven't already subscribed, at the end of the month, we're going to be giving away a So-So Toys Bat Lady. Now, I know that's DC, but it's okay. It's Star Wars videos be just fine. I want to just get into that. If you are curious how I got this so fast because it was just released, I got mine from Pop Collectibles. There's a link in the description below with a discount code for you. I am super excited to add this to the collection. I think we should unbox it. All right, here we go. We've got the Moff Gideon box sitting right here. It's it's a normal Star Wars box. There's nothing really exciting about this, honestly. Uh, there's our uh, our Moff Gideon right there with the band TMS-029 for those who are counting. And we've got our uh, little figure cutout deal they've got on the side of the box. And then on the back, there's all the whodunits, but nobody really cares about that. Let's see what's in here, guys. Let's see what we got. Here we go, yeah. Got a little box art. All right, that's an actual photo of the figure. Got a little dark saber action. So that's cool. That's all right. And uh, I'm not expecting a whole lot of accessories with this. So let's see what we got. And we got, we got, no, there's that. Let's see. The dark saber is, is what I'm really, really super interested in. Uh, I know a lot of people, I've seen a lot of people say, if I can actually open this thing, that they're going to buy this figure and sell the figure and just keep the dark saber. Uh, that's an interesting, it's an interesting strategy. Uh, we'll see. I, I don't know if that's good or bad, but here it is. Let's take a look at the figure straight out of the box. Come on. Oh, yeah, he's got a cape, so he's going to be in the, the bag thing. All right, so if you guys get figures with capes, um, they have, uh, there's a bag underneath without dumping all the accessories out. All right, so we got all the accessories out here. We got the plastic out. Interesting stuff. I, I, I want to take just one second and take a look at this base because honestly, it's actually different. It is not even kidding. It's actually different. So the first thing I noticed with this base is right along the edges. You can see the highlights right here, right along the edges here, along the edges there. We haven't seen that before on any other base of this design that I can recall. And I've got quite a few in this room, um, but that's interesting. That's just something that stands out a little bit. It's nothing major, but you can see it along the edges, uh, along the edges here. You can see the highlight. That's an interesting why they did that, I don't know. You can see it kind of here on the back as well. Let's see back there. That's interesting. So anyways, it does say Moff Gideon right there. So there's that if you're interested in that. And then we've got a regular, you know, crotch grabber stand, whatever. Uh, hands wise, on the figure, we've got a couple just relaxed hands. So we've got that going on. And then uh, we've got these other hands that come in the box. So it looks like we've got a couple blaster holding hands. Which look out oh, here. Just let's just take a take a look at this real quick. Real quick. Look at the the paint applications on this hand. It actually is quite nice. There's some nice silver wash going on here. Kind of matches that base, and uh, I think the coloration looks good. And I kind of dig those. I, I like like the little padded knuckles on the gloves. That's kind of a nice touch. So uh, blaster holding hand. We get two. Uh, let's see here. Where's the other one? Uh, saber holding hands. Oh. Two saber holding hands, if you want to use that. And then we get another uh, a fist, just a general fist. So not a whole lot of accessories on the hand section, but you know, honestly, you know, what else do you really need? The blaster is pretty nice as well. Nice, you know, coloration towards the, uh, the front of the, uh, the barrel here. That's nice. A scope on it, which is an interesting thing. Like for, I don't know, do you really need a scope? Probably don't for, for what you're shooting at. With this, this is I wouldn't consider this a long range weapon, though it needs a scope. But we've seen weird stuff like this in Star Wars before. It's nicely done. It's nicely done. It, it straight up looks like um, it's got like a 1911 style look to it a little bit, a little 1911 style uh, with a, a, a weird barrel design and then a, 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 a scope at the top. It's kind of a strange thing. I don't know what they actually made it off out of, but there's that. All right, let's talk about these guys because this, honestly, 
these are the these are like the cool accessories. So when you first get it, you can see like camera rig and stuff in the reflection of this guy. It's very glossy. Uh, when you first get it, um, they come apart like this. So it comes comes something like this, right? Um, interesting. We uh, because it's the first time seeing a Hot Toys dark saber. Uh, this is our first time seeing this hilt. So let's take a look at this. So you're going to get three different variations. You got a unlit hilt. You get a lit hilt, and then you get a swooshing. A little blade action. So let's look at this first, all right? Um, this right here is actually very, very well done. So the way it would look, and it's got a little D-ring there for, you know, hold on his belt or whatever. Uh, the way this would look, it actually, you can only go in one way. Follow the angle right here, match that angle, and uh, here we go. You have an unlit dark saber as it should be, right? Um, pretty nice. So nice paint applications going on. This is definitely a high gloss black. There's uh, some nice gray. I would say it's more like a gunmetal-ish gray. The, the highlighted parts you're seeing is more of gunmetal. There's more sort of silver uh, highlights here and along here. And then we got this nice metallic silvery look there. And then again on the bottom, we got these like two dots. This is well done. So if you want to switch this out for the lit blade, all you got to do is yank that out, get this going with the correct angle. And there we go. Now you've got a proper, proper, Blade. So look at the uh, look at the actual design of this dark saber blade. It is actually quite well done. Look at this. It gets a little brighter towards the top. You got a nice highlight al along the, both edges. This is stinking cool. You best believe Mando will be uh, acquiring this at some point. And of course, we're going to get the deluxe Mando soon. Hopefully soon, the Chrome Mando. Uh, and this will be just perfect with them. But in the meantime. Oh, Moff Gideon's got it. This is very well, it's very lightweight. Like that's very, very lightweight. And it's a long, it's a long hilt or a long blade, sorry. It's a long blade. That's quite good. So if you want to switch that out, obviously you switch this out. You can put in the other hilt or the other blade, sorry. It goes in just like this. And then you've got this thing going on here. It's a weird shape. This, this is a weird shape. So there's like a, um, it's like, it's like a, a, it goes straight and then it bends. It's a weird shape. It's not the same shape we saw with the other, um, the other blades for the, the Jedi uh, or even the Sith. So it's interesting. But you can see there, the more of the white uh, spider webbing effect or electric effect is going deeper into this, which is nice. And again, you get the highlight going on all the sides. But that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty sick and cool. I like that. So everybody's going to say, well, we want to see, we want to see them off. Let's go ahead and get him over here and check a look at this head sculpt because honestly, it's quite good. It's quite good. I, I really do think this head sculpt, it, it's one of their better ones. It is absolutely one of their better head sculpts. And they do well with older individuals anyways. Uh, the aging and the skin texture and paint applications, they just generally do a really good job. But with this one, I think they absolutely nailed it. And it'll look better under some proper lighting. I know we're using a little bit of a, a, a white background for this, um, but I wanted to show you some of the you know other stuff. Uh, when we get into proper lighting, it's going to look even better. I like this quite a bit. I like the fact that he's looking straight ahead. I like the just it's a blank expression, but it kind of makes sense for his particular character. Uh, so I kind of like that. And then there, here's the hair, the hair texture. I just think they I think they did a really good job with that. So there's cool. All right, so. The actual figure itself, tons of gloss paint going on with the armor as it should be. In fact, you can see all the lights and everything reflecting in it. A couple of red light or red, uh, yeah, red lights that do do not light up. Those are not light up features. They're just they're just there, and that's fine because I don't want those batteries anyways. We do have some uh, armor pieces on the shoulder that are velcroed on, and then we've got double bend elbows. You got double bend knees with a slight ratchet. Can kind of hear that right there, like slight ratchet. Um, torso wise. You know, it, it's, it's, it, it's going to be, it's going to, he didn't, he's not Spider-Man. Let's put it that way. It's not Spider-Man. It's not Spider-Man. But look at the design on this cummerbund belt action he's got going on. What? Look at the detail of that. Dang. And I love the, like the, the little lining of the stitch going on uh, through, or the, uh, uh, the lining of the garment he's got going on there. It's not stitch. Love that. But this is pleather. This is going to be a pain. That's that is what it is. But look at this thing going to the back. More high gloss back here. 
the the material of the suit is is definitely a synthetic cloth, but it's not a what's the best word? It's not like a uh, uh, rubbery material. It's just straight up fabric, and it looks great. It looks great. The cloak is wired, so there is a little bit of that going on. Kind of. Been, so there's a wire going along this edge. You see this little red stitching here. There's a wire going on there. There's a wire going on the other side. No wire on the bottom, but there is, it is double layered. So you got this nice burgundy-ish color, which matches the figure great. Um, they just, they did a really good job with that. So I kind of dig that. Uh, and then obviously the boots, which is a point of contention for every Star Wars collector because Hot Toys, for whatever reason, doesn't give us a split cut boot. There is some range of motion there. I mean, you can do that, but you can see that that material right there is going, you, just don't try it. That's all I'm saying. I like this. I like this figure quite a lot. So I think the proper thing to do, the proper thing to do is to uh, get him posed up. Let's do it. Now, if that isn't a likeness that Hot Toys has absolutely nailed, I don't know what is. It's quite, quite fantastic. And, uh, you know, this is what Hot Toys is good at. This is what they excel at is, is likenesses. It's certainly older individuals they do better at than younger individuals. And the suit, the tailoring is beautiful. The head sculpt is just, it's just 10 out of 10. I mean, look, look come on. How do, you, how do you not appreciate that head sculpt? Absolutely gorgeous. So there are a couple things to note. Uh, one, the suit material is a lint magnet. Because Well, it's black material, so you're going to see everything anyways. Um, but it is definitely a lint magnet. If you got pets, keep them away from this figure. You're going to catch everything on there. Also, <laughs> this uh, this holster uh, that goes uh, for, the, for the blaster, absolute nightmare to get in. I'd use tweezers. So the flap... Um, goes that holds the uh, the, the blaster in um, is like that um, thread in the needle situation. Uh, and once you get the blaster in there, it, tweezers help. Uh, I doubt I will ever take that out again because it was just a pain in the butt to deal with. So I'm glad it's there. It's there for adornment. But he's going to use the dark saber, and that's that's where we're going to go for that. Uh, obviously, he's chasing down Grogu. And, uh, but you can see like the details on the belt, the details on the, the armor. You see like the difference in the matte black he's got at the top versus that gloss. And it's just, it's just, whoo. This is why we do this, guys. It's freaking amazing. Uh, going down that red pinstripe that goes down both the cloak, the belt, and the uh, pant all the way down to these boots, which as you can see right there, they're not perfectly clean. Uh, they match the Mandalorian Death Trooper. Remember that one? It's got like the mud and everything going on. Yeah, this just... This is a simple like parade rest uh, or I'm waiting to destroy everything. I'm waiting on my troopers to do their job and I'm just going to sit back here and wait. That's what this is. And I think... I think it matches it uh, just perfectly. But, you know, let's do some poses. So let's take a look at this guy. I, I broke out the infamous battle damage Thanos display base. I had to steal it from Spider-Man to use it for this, but I thought it made sense. I kind of dig it. Uh, so we did break out the dark saber. We did kind of pose him up a little bit. Uh, the cloak with the wire on it. It's not the strongest wire, but it, it'll do. I mean, it's typical hot toys wire. It's nothing. I mean, if you got a custom cloak for somebody, then it will do way more than this particular thing will do. However, the material they use, I'd really, I really do like it. I think they did a good job with it. Um, head sculpt wise, again, you can see it just from different angles. Absolutely nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. So here's our uh, here's our uh, friendly old dark saber, looking all kinds of epic. I mean, you can see this the detail they put on this thing. If only it lit up, like that would be the next level thing. However, I can tell you in person, you don't even need it to light up. It looks better than any. Jedi lightsaber, Sith lightsaber that we've seen in the past, just due to the contrast in colors. I don't think because it doesn't light up, I don't think that's a fail. I think it's just fine. Um, so, yeah. Damn, those look good. All right, so going down, just if you want to, uh, I guess I can zoom out here. You can see kind of what we're working with here. I do have them on this little rock display base. 
We've got him. I've got a little bit of movement in the cloak. Not a whole lot because, again, the wire is not super strong. But I dig it. So I would love to know if you guys are going to be picking this up and uh, if you are, um, you know, hyped about this figure or is it just one of those that because it's in the Mandalorian line, you have to have it or because it's you know, a legendary actor. So I, which why are you picking this up? Just let me know. All right. You know who's on the scene? We've got Mando here. And of course, he is taking control of the Darksaber. Now, I, I want to do a, a fair like fight scene with these two guys. However, I think I'm going to hold off on that until we get the Chrome Mando. The pro, like the the I think I'm, I'm going to hold off until that one. But for this time being, somebody wanted to see these two together. They look pretty good, I think. So there's there's Mando there. He's taking control of the dark saber, and of course, he has rescued Grogu because you know that's what he was there to do. So he accomplished his mission. And then over here, we've got we've got this guy who is soundly defeated. It's just it's it, it just doesn't work out so well for him. Not in this particular scene, anyways. Uh, but here we go. These guys looking all kinds of awesome. But look at Mando back there. Hmm. That dark, the dark saber looks really good. Not even lit up. I mean, you can see it right here in the uh, in the video. It, it looks pretty stinking good. Oof. Dude, these Mando figures, and then of course Clone Wars figures, are just some of the most fun things to do. F fun things to collect, pose, and and display. And uh, a defeated Moff Gideon. It's not a bad one. At least until we get our uh, our dark troopers, right? Maybe one day we'll have those. One more pose. And you know we had to pose our Moff Gideon up with some Death Troopers. So here we go. This is a Death Trooper from The Mandalorian on your left. And one from Rogue One, the Death Trooper Deluxe Specialist Deluxe. The, the, all the stuff on the on the right. Which I hope one day we'll get some more of those guys. The uh, the Mando ones are, are pretty cool too. So I'm not upset about that. But I figured I'd just showcase both in here. Moff Gideon here. A little bit of a, a, little bit of a walking pose going on here. Looking determined looking uh you know uh just ready to crush his competition his enemies and uh fight one out for the empire this thing I, it, it looks great it looks great I, i'm a fan of this thing so um maybe not it's, it's not like i said earlier it's not a spider-man figure it's not one you're gonna pose crazy but shelf presence absolutely absolutely shelf presence with this guy he looks quite good Look at this guy. I I think so anyways. You know, do I think he's going to sell out really quick? Like, I, you know, I don't know how many of these are made. Um, certainly not as popular as the recently released and soon to be reviewed by me, Snow Speeder Luke. That one's going to be a lot of fun. But um, not one to sleep on. If you guys have any um, history of, uh, of six-scale figures, uh, especially Empire, Imperial Officers, you know, we're talking about Grand Moff Tarkin, we're talking about Director Krennic. Those guys, once they do sell out, prices go up. That's just history. Is it going to happen with this guy? Yeah, probably will. But uh, time will tell and we'll, we'll find out. And then the people will be complaining like, oh, I wish I had picked him up. And that's what's going to happen. And uh, I'm here to tell you, it's pretty sick and cool. If you want to get one for yourself now and not have to wait, check out Pop Collectibles and link in the description below. Discount code as well if you want to save some money with them. They got payment plans, all that kind of stuff. But he's in stock. He's shipping. And um, yeah, if you got a Mando display, you know we're going to see in season three. You know we're going to see more of this guy. You know it's going to happen. So just saying, pick him up. As always, click what you like. See you next time.